Hi everyone and welcome back to another video on Terraform. In this video we are going to focus on using the for each loop to actually iterate through a list of objects to create multiple resources in your environment. In our case we're working on Snowflake so this example will focus on creating multiple schemas rather than trying to make each of them individually. If we take a look at the Terraform documentation it mentions that by default a resource block configures one infrastructure object. And as it says here, sometimes you want to manage several similar objects. Their example is maybe a fixed pool of compute instances. In our case, as I said, it will be uh, a, a fixed pool of schemas or and it could be anything else. This is just our example. It will accept a map or a set of string. And essentially what it will do is iterate through each of them and create the exact same resource as many times in a row as you have uh, in that list. So how would you do that? If we hop over to Visual Studio Code here, we can see the main part of our current Terraform files. And in the previous video where we went over the idea of variables, we created two schemas referencing these variables. But let's say we had 5, 10, 20 schemas, or you know, again, it could be roles or views or anything. In that scenario, using something like a for each loop might make more sense. As it mentions, these keys can be a map or a set of strings. So the first example we'll do is using the map, and we'll see how we can use that in the for each loop. Here it has the map directly within the resource itself, and then it iterates here. What we'll do is actually create a variable that is a map and use that instead. So I'll paste this over here and, and walk you through it. So we're creating a new variable called schema maps. The type is a map as opposed to a string or anything else. And the default value, and in this case, what the actual values will be, is written out this way. Essentially, the way this is written out is saying for each item in this list, and I've just created two, two items here, set the key and the value to the same thing. Because in a map and the way that we're going to use this, it's going to need to reference either the key or the value. In this case, we can pick either, but we need to have those set in order for the map to be properly set. So we're saying again, for each item in this list, essentially set the key and the value to the same thing, to whatever it is. So this would be test one, test one, test two, test two. Now to actually use this in our error form, we can come over to our main.tf and we'll just create a new resource. So we'll keep these, but we'll make some new ones using this map. The resource is a schema. We're giving it a unique name, calling it all schemas. And the new part here, is right here we're adding this for each attribute and it's looking for something that it can iterate over which has to be a map or a set of strings as mentioned earlier and seeing that our variable is a map we can use that here so we're saying use this variable schema maps and for each value set that as the name attribute for the schema so as opposed to saying you know take this direct value here we're saying take each value from this map and as to reiterate here, the key and the value are the same here. They're both going to be whatever's in this list. So for this case, we could say each value or each key and the result would be the same. But for consistency, we'll just say each value. And we'll put this under the database, myfirstdb.name, which is right here. If we go into our Snowflake environment, here's what it looks like right now. I can refresh. We just have these empty schemas here that we made in the previous video. So now let's go ahead and see what happens if we can iterate through a list and create it. So let's save and I'll go through and Terraform init, Terraform plan to make sure that it looks right. We should see two new schemas and we do, which means it recognized the variable correctly and it is now creating two resources for us. Terraform apply. Yes. Now let's refresh and here we go. We can see both of these are here. So a way to simplify this now, if we wanted, we could get rid of this here. We no longer need this. And instead we could just add these to our list, to our map and keep it all consolidated. At this point, we no longer need these Save Now let's try this again. It should be the same, but what Terraform is going to do is recognize that the ID of this object changed. So it's going to 
destroy that original object, but then recreate them as uh, with a new ID. Terraform, apply. Sometimes this gets goofed up. I just refresh and I see they're deleted. So maybe the order was a little weird, but let's try this again. Sometimes it gets out of order a little bit, but in this case, we just needed to run it twice. And now we see both of these are here. We're up to date and we're using just a variable. So we can simplify our code a bit. Now, the second way to do this, as we mentioned, is using a set. In this case, we used a map, but what if we wanted to use the set instead? In this case, we'll need to do this directly in the resource because this is an expression. And you can read a little more about expressions here, but essentially, if you try to add this as a variable, you're going to get an error. So instead, you can put this right in the resource itself. So let's copy this here. And in this case, you can see it's telling you to use the key. Let's copy this here and update it accordingly for us. Instead of the AWS user, we'll do the snowflake schema and we'll call this set schemas just to keep it separate. And we're not going to replace these. To set, we'll give some new schema names. We'll call this set one, and set two, just to differentiate where these are coming from and you can see what's happening. Now, in this case, we have this new resource. It's going to iterate through each of these and the name will be each key that we have in here. That'll be the name of the schema and we actually need to give a database as well. So let's, let's hard code this here. All right, now let's go through the usual Terraform plan. Make sure it looks right. Set one, set two, Terraform apply. Confirm that these are not yet here. Now let's say yes, and here we go, set one, set two. So we've now used the for each loop in two different ways. We've used it from a map and we've used it from a set. One we set as a variable, one we set directly in the resource. So it's really up to you how you actually wanna use this and implement it. But by using maps, especially in variables, I think you can really trim down the amount of code that you need to write and make your Terraform uh, project a little cleaner. So that'll do it for this video. As always, if you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you at the next one. Thank you.